All right, man. I'm excited. I'm excited. This is your yours is uh Autolink is a legendary feature and it's a you know I'm I'm excited to, to put it into practice. I start I'm starting with a um how should we do this? Do you want to should we start with a demo and have you sort of explain some of the functionality? Or do you want to talk about like why you did it? I've got a, a clean graph that I haven't used it with. It has the King James Bible and the whole of the Mahabharata in it. So it's got a lot of text mm. and uh, we can start seeing what it's like to to use it in that situation but yeah i like it so maybe i can intro a little bit of uh the context for like what what get, what gets me to the point where i'm publishing a yeah maybe we should better. start by you know you've been an yeah. amazing member of the community for like since when for for forever yeah i think beginning of 2020 is when i really ramped up yeah and uh, i think for me, uh, the the core you know usage pattern in Rome just sort of lit something up for me in my brain, right? And then that just had the compounding effects of actually starting to use the daily note every single day as an entry point into a new way of just putting stuff down and then also getting the benefits from uh, everything I'd already put down before. So started to really grok, I think, the value of that. And uh, so uh, the big thing that happened for me as a side effect of using Rome was learning CSS. And so yeah. I have like a theme that's decently popular and uh, I really enjoy using it. And it, the aesthetics of it, it's kind of interesting how it doesn't actually change any of the functionality of Rome, but you relate to it differently. Like there's an emotional aspect to, to how you use a, a tool that's so intimate. And so the, yep. the theming was really cool. So didn't have any coding background, learned CSS from scratch. <laughs> and, and now I think I'm actually capable of troubleshooting most CSS questions myself, right? With a little help from Stack Overflow. So that's where I was. And then with JavaScript- Can I, can I brag about you for a second though? Uh, I, I remember in the early days, maybe the first year or so of the pandemic, you were just on the Slack channel helping people constantly. It was like we had an extra customer support person doing frontline customer service. And then I found out you're like a major, you know, international consultant, like, you know, partner at McKinsey. Like you're like the thing that all the, you know, kids I went to college with were like dreaming of growing up to be, you know, you know, making a billion dollars a year selling factories in China or something like that. Like, but like, yeah, I don't know what you guys do. Like, you know, none like of the corporate above. rating or whatever. I like the, well, actually I saw, I saw a great thread. Someone was talking about McKinsey and, and how insane it is that a 20 something with no industry experience can actually go in and make a business better. But like, I yeah. just got a kick out of the fact that you've got like a thousand people in your organization and you were doing frontline. I don't know, customer support for yes. them blew me away. It's quite yeah. humbling, right? Because uh, the competence of your day job is very different from, I think, the world that you guys live in as uh, folks that build products. And, and so I have no tech background. And, uh, you know, I've always been intrigued by some of my peers who, who do work in startups and so on. And so for me, I think the way you learn a new sort of profession is, is you apprentice, right? And, and you apprentice humbly and you do it, uh, you know, learning what the grunt work is. And a lot of the grunt work is just like bug fixes and understanding how features work and being able to explain that. And uh, so that's kind of where my focus had been is like, let me learn by trying to solve other people's problems. And that's sort of the mindset that made me a consultant in the first place. So yeah. it really helps. I, 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 and it's, it was very rewarding for me to orient to like the frame of service. Uh, and, and Rome kind of offered a, a way for me to just feel like, uh, you know, I was in this community of people that that all felt that same way. They were just like helping each other out. There wasn't any ulterior motive, right? Sure, people were happy to kind of, you know, set up their own practices and and maybe even, uh, you know, I don't know, there's a handful of folks who've been able to actually make careers out of Rome, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. um, but but it's, and hopefully it's a lot more as, as we roll out Rome Depot and, you know, excited to have a revenue revenue be like sort of the opposite of the Apple app store where we're instead of taking revenue from app developers, we're, we're sharing it with them. So, yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. So that was the CSS. And then uh, with Rome JS, the developers that sort of came to Rome, like David and others, it was really cool to see what they were able to do. Uh, and I think I initially just, this, you know, sort of felt like all I can do is help them test these and then mm -hmm. perhaps suggest workflows and functionality. And I realized that I was kind of just dumping a whole backlog of uh, feature requests and bug, rec bug fixes on them instead of actually contributing. Yeah. And then uh, started to edge into JavaScript, had one of them kind of just walk me through the basics. And, and you know, people are so generous at their time. They're like, 
you know, set up time. They'll they'll share their VS code. They'll show you how to like do do things from the very basics. Uh, I think there was someone on Twitter who was trying to learn Python recently, and I totally empathize with what she was sharing. Right, like uh, just not knowing how to even boot up Python and a terminal. Yep. Like that's where a lot of people tend to be. Is the yep. barrier to entry for coding is is kind of interesting. So for me, the simplicity of a code block in Rome. Yeah, and then okay, drop down JavaScript. You know, you activate it with a simple button. And then in there is all of your primitives uh, that that sit right next to the the HTML DOM of Rome that I can see right there. Th there's something really cool about having your IDE be integrated with the thing you're actually trying to program. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that actually uh, allowed me to then slowly build some of the basics uh, of JavaScript. And so I think that Just is for the people who are here before yeah. you before you got to Rome, you had never done any CSS and never done any JavaScript. Nope. And you've got your your a full-time consultant and a partner at a yeah, major consulting firm. So it's not like you've got a million hours to go no. do this sort of stuff. Yeah. No, the learning was pretty rapid because again, it's just so highly contextual, right? Because like you're with people who are deeply in this, who are very generous with their time and you're, you're working on applications that matter to them. It's a confluence of so many things that helps you learn in such a fascinating way. So I think it's really cool to be able to kind of tweak your own tools. So that, that was what drew me towards some basic stuff. So I started off with just creating some buttons and things like that. I got another extension that I think we pushed called random block, which is just a simple. Which I love. Thing. Yeah. It's I, so I was cool. using it the other day in our team graph and I was like, it, it was, there were things I had never even seen before. And yeah. Yeah. yeah it's like, I'm, I'm sort of uh, fettered by any tags or filters or, you know, any sort of protocol on space repetition. The simplicity of just like a random block is fascinating sometimes i'm just bored and it's my displacement activity now right it's like nothing else to do instead of pre pressing refresh on your desktop right press random block on room and sometimes something catches your eye and it makes you reach out to someone or it makes you go back and revisit you know a whole thing that you had studied that so there's a kind of a natural space repetition to i think just pure random serendipity right so i, I love that so it was was random block the extension that we shipped today uh when did you write that that was, I think, a year or so ago, and uh, that was probably one of the first JavaScript uh, sort of achievements that I had. Like, oh, I have to create, you know, a button, and then I've got to make sure it's style, and then I got to do this on-click thing, and then I have to learn how to do data log. That's the other piece of this, right? The puzzle yeah. is being able to actually interact with Rome's uh, uh, data structure. But mm -hmm. even that's actually, I don't, I don't think I'll, I, I can't say I know data log, but I think I know how to reference a cheat sheet. Yep. And basically play Lego with it, right? Because I, I know what each piece does. Now, independently, I can't really write it, but uh, the, the format is pretty, the, the syntax is pretty easy. So For that, anyone that who's watching, amazing. there's an amazing site that I used to learn data log, which was uh, learndatalogtoday.org. And it's an interactive tutorial. And it's it's one of the you know most fun ways to learn data log. And as a query language, it's it's actually like, I like it a lot better than SQL and any of those other things, but yeah. yeah. Um, Exactly. Uh, no, that's super cool that, yeah, you've got the, uh, let me, let me see. We've only been live for less than a day. So, um, well, I'll, I'll uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Why don't you kind of share your screen and maybe, uh, well, I was just going to say that, that it's amazing that one of the extensions that, that we've shipped with for the, uh, the opening of this Rome graph is, um, uh, is the first piece of JavaScript that you ever read. Yes. <laughs> it's awesome. It's awesome. <laughs> it's accurate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's finally got me to the place where I was capable of taking on a more complex extension. And that one I needed real time. So I was on paternity leave when I wrote that. And, uh, you know, while the baby was sleeping or when I had a few moments to just do something, uh, I was obsessively trying to figure out how to do this. And where it was born out of was, I think, a lot of different things. So one is the unlinked references workflow in Rome is really powerful, right? I mean, that that is such a simple means by which you can sort of do a reverse search while still seeing things in the right format in, in that familiar kind of block layout. Mm -hmm. And then you can go and sort of uh, surgically rescue blocks, right? And, and bring, link them. But it, it did leave some uh, gaps, right? So like, for example, if you're on a page, what you want is to almost see everything that's unlinked. And so that's where a tool like Unlink Finder was very helpful. Yeah. But then there's this third missing piece, which is that when you're inputting, that's the time when you actually want to shape stuff. 
there's the yeah. bard. Um, that's the time when you actually want to, you know, <laughs> really shape stuff and and link them automatically. And there actually was a tool. Uh, it's a Chrome extension, and that actually the author that just replied to us on Twitter. Uh, it was called Auto Link, and it's a Chrome extension, and you could uh, add a list of words to it that it would then just auto link as you typed it. Awesome. But that required you to then keep that list up to date. Yep. So that all of that then resulted in me realizing that, hey, I want to auto alias. I want to auto tag any existing page on my graph. I got a thousand pages of plus, right? So how do I, every time I'm typing, never forget to, to link something that makes sense to link. And so that's kind of where it was born out of and then learned a bit of regex. And I think I actually had wow. to... Uh, hire someone uh, on code mentor or something for like two hours to, to actually like show me how to do regex in a way that would solve for all the edge cases. Yeah. And it made me realize just how challenging it is to do something like unlinked references, right? Because uh, right now unlinked references actually does do some silly stuff. Like it'll link uh, words that are in a URL. Yeah, yeah, yeah. example. So we've yeah. got to fix some of that, but I was trying to also remove some of those edge cases and it was challenging <laughs> to, to yeah. do. There's so, a lot of ways in which I think this extension is, you know, it makes Rome more of a complete product. And uh, like, there have been times where, where we've even looked at building this ourselves and it's not an easy, it's not an easy feature to build. Um, like you've, you've done something really impressive here. And so, um, yeah, should we, should we jump into uh, let's jump in. this or? Uh, yeah, uh, you want to share yours and then maybe you can just almost like install it and we can Play around with yeah, them. so I'm. I am. I'll share my screen right now. Okay. So, um, let's see if this is the right one. There we go. All right. All right. So this is a um, basically a, a new graph that I just created um, when I was. We we recently lifted the uh, the ten markdown file limit. Um, we actually hadn't realized that we still had that after all these performance improvements that we've done. So I've imported the King James Bible and the Mahabharata into here um, sort of as a, as a performance test. So it's a pretty big graph, um, but I'm going to start by just installing the, um, well, let, let's, let's start by, um, let me make this a little bit bigger. Um, just I tend to do things. All right, let's start by um, just opening up the Rome Depot marketplace. And so all of these uh, extensions here are extensions that um, we have code reviewed for security and for functionality. Like these are things that are for, for you know, the last, I guess, two years, year and a half that, that Rome JS has been out there. It's a little bit of the wild west because Rome is, you know, easy to share your graph with other people. There's, there's all sorts of risks people uh, have been worried about in terms of security, um, about having random JavaScript running. So we've, we've had the little warning of, you know, yes, I know what I'm doing. I've read the code, but a lot of people don't know what they're doing. And so we wanted to make it really easy for every Rome user to do it. So this is, this is one click to install. So let's start with your blocks. Um, so I'm just going to install random block and it's as easy as that. Now it's installed and I'm going to install, um, uh, where's the, uh, auto tag mode. Let's install both of these. Um, and so first thing is I can open this in the help so I can see the readme right here. Um, if I want, you know, if, if I don't have the, the creator, uh, with me, I can, I can get that readme going, but let's, um, let me move this. It's over here. First thing I want to do is just like use this random block feature to jump somewhere in the in the Mahabharata, and then maybe we should start like um, I will actually I'll close this since you're here. I don't need that that help open. Um, but let's let's just start. I just made a comment. Um, so comments require you to in your user settings just set a uh, set a display name, and then if you hold the command key, you can get this little plus button, and it'll let you um, make a comment. Um, that is tagged for that that date, and so that's just an easy way to open up something for uh, sort of you know when I want to write about the thing, but not just change the structure of the original text. Um, so, which which should I start with? Should I just start by making some pages for things which are going to show up in here, or uh, or what? Oh wait, actually, first things first. 
I have to click this this eye in order to turn it on. I remember being a little a little surprised by that. I, why do you like? Why do you want to start with it turned off? Maybe I'll, I'll challenge you on this because we. I, I kind of feel like, you know, if it's if it's as easy to uh, um, in my settings, I can like disable it without uninstalling it. Um, so I'm I'm sort of like, shouldn't we just start with the the feature enabled, and they can they can disable it if they don't want the functionality or what? Wait, Abe, we're, we're, I can't hear you. You're muted. Thank you. Sorry, I think it was a, wasn't allowing me to unmute myself. Um, so look, I, here's the thing. The, the honest answer to that is I would love for this feature to be on all the time. Mm -hmm. But the challenge is that it does some undesirable stuff. Just like okay. it would be undesirable for you to press link all today on unlinked yeah. references for some yeah. situations, you'll create a bunch of noise in your graph. Yeah. So the, the reasoning is one, uh, if if you haven't yet excluded the pages that you think are trivial to be tagging in a okay. large text like this, you're going to create a bunch of undesirable linked references. And, and that's where I think I've realized it's useful in Rome to make your page references fairly unique, right? When they aren't something that you intend to tag in every uh, place they appear. So I'll give you an example. I use a tag called consider, right? And, and that's just a tag that I use to like, tell myself to consider something like if I want to consider reading, consider watching, et cetera, but I don't want every instantiation of the word consider to be tagged in my graph. Yes. Yes. So that's one example. Now the way to fix that is I've created in this extension, a way to exclude specific pages. Mm -hmm. It's very trivial. The way to do it right now is so just create a page called auto tag dash hyphen exclude. Let's create a new page. Auto tag dot no hyphen. Yeah. Dash exclude yeah and then you go to that page and the first block of that page you just type the a comma spaced list of all the pages you want to exclude without the without the brackets okay so for example if you wanted to exclude uh i don't know if you have any pages here in this graph that aren't like unique but well, if you had a if, history right that yeah, way exactly so if you had the if you had a page called history yeah that's a good example yep and so then it will no longer tag that Cool. When auto tag mode is on now, until uh, folks have actually churned through this sufficiently and um, populated that that uh, you know thing with the, the the right pages they don't want to tag, I think it's going to do undesirable things. The other thing I need to actually fix, quite honestly, is if you're using aliases, which is the other feature that this enables, mm -hmm. uh, is it it sits on top of uh, David Vargas's page synonyms JS, which we have uh, to. Uh, he has not pushed that one up yet, so we yes. sort of disabled that one. That that's not going to. Yeah, not going to make sense yet. Okay, so then let's not talk about that. Yeah, but well, that, you, that's you the other place. Right? Too, because this hopefully this recording will, you know, have. Oh yeah, time. that's right. So, so th what that does is actually just uh, does this really fancy thing where it it for every page that you go and add an aliases attribute. Yeah. And then again, it's a comma space list of all the aliases to that page. Yep. Auto tag will automatically alias them for you using that same function that David uh, exposes. So that's very pop. That's very very uh, powerful, right? So uh, that's the other thing which I need to fix, which is that when I'm in that block, don't tag those things. Oh yeah, what yeah, doing yeah. Right now, there's a bit of a recursive behavior there. So that's a long answer to why I actually I did something simple, which is I said you decide when to activate it using either the icon or the shortcut, which is Alt I. So if I'm right, yeah. Um, now, will auto linker only work after I finished editing a block, or does it work sort of across the whole graph all the time? It only works. So what this what this uh, uses is actually something uh, called arrive JS, which is basically a, a logic that allows you to uh, have an observer as to when you're arriving or leaving a given text field. Okay. So um, so, so in this right case, now, if I if I do yeah. something like I make a page for Rama mm -hmm. and I make a page for Vedic, mm -hmm. right? Um, so, you know, if I, if I'm just reading this page, mm -hmm. right, I'm not going to happen. Nothing's going to happen, right? Nothing's going to happen. That's right. Um, but, but if you click into a block here, and then I click I out of it. Oh, wow. Wait, what happened? Okay. What's that? <laughs> All right. <laughs> What's going on here? This is part of the undesirable behavior, which I have. Let's undo, let's undo that. 
let's undo that. So actually go into settings and turn okay. off the natural language date thing. So it's it's the auto tag setting. Yeah, turn on natural language date. Turn turn it off. Yeah, because that 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 one is a little tricky because it it gets cute with things like now and today and tomorrow. Oh wow! Oh wow! Okay, cool. Yeah. So yeah. that's that's a little tricky. It's good so let's not use that. So now all we're doing is the very simple. Yeah. Great. So now if I click in here mm -hmm. and I click away, yeah, you so Rama and Vedic. there and you go. Uh, and it only tags the first inst instance of Rama and Vedic. So there's a yeah. lot more instances of Rama. And I, I did some user testing on that. And it, it seemed like a lot of people felt that yeah. redundant references don't make sense. Yeah, no, not at all. That's awesome. I was, I was actually kind of worried that that was going to be the case. All right, cool. The other thing it'll do is if it's Rama lowercase, and if you have the case and sensitive setting on, it, it'll alias that, even so without paste in on it. Let's try this. So if I'm yeah. just here, I'm like, there we go. And it aliases using a Rome alias. So this is a yep. link to here. Exactly. It's awesome. Exactly. So that's the core functionality. And, and so the idea is that when you're typing, a lot of people, I think, at this stage in their Rome career, probably mm -hmm. uh, or they probably intentionally link the pages that they care about. Yep. But this is about catching the ones you forget, right? Yep. Um, and it's about, you know, as you're reading, uh, I would just click through the blocks and then, uh, you know, it's, it's a much more curated way of tagging uh, because it excludes the one you don't want. You can turn off that natural language date thing. And then honestly, once you get the aliases installed, that's when it's really powerful because yep. then it's catching all the aliases. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, you reminded me of what is, there's another extension that's similar that shows, you know, I, I don't know. I think you might've showed me this in the past yes. that, uh, what's that, what's that one called? That's called unlink finder. Okay. Uh, and actually it's on Rome JS now. That's, so one that, that, that's uh, going to be part of what David uploads in a couple of days. That'll be what David is, is pushing up in, in the next few days. So that'll be, uh, that'll be really cool. We'll add that. And that one does a similar behavior to what you're doing, but it shows you all of those places first and then lets you sort of manually turn it on. Right? Exactly. That, it's a very different solution to it. it it's an overlay and, yeah. and it doesn't depend on you being clicked into any given block. In fact, it's actually functioning purely on the, uh, by adding a bunch of divs mapped mm -hmm. to each letter. And then when you do that, it, it does some fancy work behind the scenes to up, update the blocks. The other thing that uh, Tyler did when he programmed it was he also included partial matches and fuzzy matches. So he, he does catch a few more things than I'm catching here. Um, I, I try to keep mine a little simpler. Um, let's talk about something people have complained about with Rome in the past is, you know, if I've got like, you know, a page for task. And then I write, you know, somewhere else, I write a list of tasks, that mm. kind of thing. Um, mm. How do you, how do you handle that kind of stuff? Right now, I don't do any partial matches, but I think it's something that we can push to our regex as an option as well. Mm -hmm. um, Cause I, I don't think it's that uh, problematic to do. The, the main reason for that was as I was going through the decision tree of like how to process the regex. But you do, sort of, do you do do, spelling or uh, uh, this, which is, which is yes, that's, really that's nice. the easy. It's, it's a yeah. quick little flag yeah. on regex that does case insensitive. But the moment you start to get into partial words, uh, it's tough to do in the context of also excluding some edge cases. So one mm -hmm. of the things I struggled with was if you have a, 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 a sort of an orphaned open parenthesis square, yeah. you get into an infinite loop, right? It'll keep tagging the word. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and it was really frustrating. Uh, but I think we can make Usually it happen, thing, especially saying, because Josh is involved now. So <laughs> yeah, I, I've heard I've heard the saying like if you solve a problem with regex, now you have two problems or something like yes. that. Yes, like um, it was miserable. It looks like you've actually solved a problem with regex, which is pretty impressive. So yeah, with a lot of help from a bunch of folks. Yes, this is really cool. Um, any other stuff we should go over with uh, with showing this feature off? Um, no, I think it captures everything. I think the natural language date thing, you know, you can turn it on if you're just 
in your daily note. Let's uh, turn on for, uh, for showing this off because I love this. This is this is something that inspired. We um, this is a feature that we never put out. Uh, we we haven't announced, but like you know, inside brackets we have some limited amount of natural language state stuff. So if I say something like you know, I, I wonder if it does this two weeks from tomorrow, right? Um, mm -hmm. But for us, you got to do that you know while you're typing this this link out, right? Um, and, you know, of course you can always do the, the date picker to, to pick your actual date, but, um, but let's show off yours. Cause I like that. And yeah, so, so that, 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 that will be something again, you have to turn back on. And then while you're typing, I think it catches most things that are oh, how did it somehow it got turned back on. Maybe I didn't turn it off correctly last. Oh, because I hit undo. It's interesting to note that the hitting undo a few times actually turned it back on. Oh, let's okay. say uh, we may want to to fix that because mm. don't want people accidentally changing their settings through the undo command. But all right, so let's try um, now. Cool. That's the dangerous one. <laughs> dangerous one. Um, Cool. They actually need that to do there as well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's why I was I was hoping it would do that. Yeah. But okay, um, now if you just go back there, it should there, there we go. go. Boom. Um this yeah, is it's it. creating the in, uh, the index of the pages every single time. So I, I was wondering how it would perform with doing that. I'm just so surprised it's instant. It doesn't seem to cause any issues with performance. And this is a huge graph, like to like, I mean, I'll just throw another random block in here. But like this has, you know, the oh, yeah. entire Bible. Um, like if I go into the Old Testament, like wow, this has the entire Bible and the entire Mahabharata, which were the two biggest graphs in Rome Public. So like, the fact that yours is running so fast, really good. Like it's, I think it speaks to data log, right? And yeah. the the sort of the effectiveness with which it can do those queries. Because I mean, I'm making it do a lot of things here especially with page synonyms on mm -hmm. because what it has to do is just to create an index of every single page, mm -hmm. a map of an array with every single page in the graph. Mm -hmm. And then it has to also create a, an array of every single page that has aliases and all of those. Mm -hmm. And then there's a bunch of JavaScript logic that goes in and maps everything. And, and this is your first really big project. So like so far, you know, we've, we're only up, uh, I did command P to open up Rome Depot. Um, and then I click browse. And yeah, I mean, we've we've added another nine people have this installed since uh, since we started this call. So it sounds like yeah. we're trying this out. Um, awesome. Well, this is awesome. I know you've got to take off, um, yeah. but uh, I I really appreciate you you know taking the time to come on and, and talk about your extension and you know your journey with Rome. And I I don't know. Do you have any plans for uh, for future extensions, or are you busy being a dad now? You know, it's one of those things, the inspiration strikes in, at odd times. It's one of those things that I have a shower thought, you know, like, I just got to make this now. And now the dangerous thing is I can actually do something. With, That's awesome. You know, and it's, it's really cool to be able to just like put a thought uh, on paper instead of having to go and harass David and put it on his backlog. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, joy is the sense of power increasing. And um, yeah, uh, love that. I'm, I'm really really glad to see you getting your hands dirty in this and uh, it's it's funny because i i spent about eight years teaching myself to code in order to build the first version of rome and i remember uh well i mean it was like eight years from when i started learning to you know when we actually shipped and then i was able to bring on josh and yeah like um but uh i remember the pain of the first you know year when i'm i'm learning all these things but like it's, i i can't get that feedback of like what I'm building and what I'm doing. And there was all this other stuff around deploying and figuring out how you were going to store the data and all these other things. And so a big goal for Rome was to dramatically reduce the friction for people to, who just have an idea of something that they want for either their own personal use and their own way of organizing their, their thoughts and, or presenting their thoughts to other people, or ideally, you know, because Rome is sort of has multiplayer functionality built in, 
automatically. Like if you decide to share your graph, um, whether it's encrypted or not, if it's encrypted, you can share the passcode. Like Rome is is built for multiplayer. And uh, the hope is that, you know, we can see more teachers and, you know, people who, who think about different ways of communicating and different ways of exchanging knowledge to be able to just build custom UIs and prototype out an experiment without having to prove that it's venture fundable. So that's kind of my, my hope is just dramatically lower the friction for people to get their ideas out and create these kind of new um, these new experiences. So I'm really, really happy to, to, uh, to see what you've put out. And it was really great having you on the, you know, going through the, the debugging of our, our, you know, our whole, the full cycle. What was your experience with, with packaging it up for Rome.js? It was surprisingly simple for the first one, the random block, mm -hmm. because all you had to do was just tell them what to do when you turn it off. Right. Which I really liked because previously you had to refresh a, a Rome graph to turn a JavaScript extension off, right? Because even when you hit stop, it, the script is still active. Yep. So I think this is a lot more uh, foolproof, right? So if someone, ex the, they expect to see the extension go off, it goes off. Yep. I think the, I did need help on auto tag to get this uh, going because it involves some NPM stuff to get the arrive JS working in here. Yep. But I think the beauty is that that's where folks like Josh can help out, right? And yep. they, he's super open to helping folks to make this happen, so. Yep. And that's, that's something that hopefully we'll keep getting smoother as we go on, but I really appreciate you being in the first batch of people going through that. So, um, all right. Thanks so much. Uh, wait, actually, should we open the floor up for questions Let people ask questions Sure. Quick for a few minutes? All right, great. I will, um, uh, if anybody wants to, I'll just, I can just unmute everybody. Um, and, uh, just shout if you've got a question, let me see if I can figure out how to, um, I, I'll ask all to unmute. Yeah, so you got questions, comments, anything? I'll stop my share. Floor is floor is yours. Anybody who wants to, to speak? Or maybe you can wave your hand or something. I'll see if there's a... Questions, comments, concerns, snide remarks, anything? I only caught the tail end of this, um, but this looks cool. I'm a little... Um, nervous about like enabling this on my own sort of graph, just because I've got a bunch of stuff there too. So it was nice to see you go through and kind of prove that that is not something I have to stress about. So um, yeah, honestly, this was not one of the extensions that I was stoked about until I watched this. So yeah, oh, it's it's awesome. just a comment, but yeah, this is uh, lovely stuff from both of you, from everyone. So thank you. I'll, I'll be posting the recording of this uh, after the call. And so um, uh, I would definitely check out the beginning where, you know, Ave shows some, some warnings and some ways to, you know, make sure that you're excluding things that you don't want tagged all the time, like, you know, words like history or something like that. So <laughs> cool. I, I really appreciate it, Ave, like you adding the caveats to your extension up front. And, uh, you know, maybe we'll even include this video like in the, in the, the help docs that are that are part of the Rome extension itself. I think we should do that. Cool. Thanks again. That's it. Any other questions, comments? Yeah, uh, I actually have a question. What is your plan with Rome Depot? What would be like the future for it, like for a year or something? I mean, my my hope is that you know, I've, I've said before that we don't want to have a thousand employees, but we want to be able to help a thousand people make a living um, in, in general, in the sort of development of collective intelligence and, and uh, augmented intelligence and tools for thought. And so I, there was a lot of, there was a lot of work that I had to do. I, as I mentioned earlier, you know, it, it took about eight years from me trying to start building something myself to, um, to getting Rome launched. And a lot of that stuff, like, you know, managing users, figuring out how to do offline, you know, uh, like offline only, figuring out how to like not lose users data ever, or <laughs> figuring out how to do payments. A lot of that stuff was really incidental to the development of new user interfaces and new like functionality for the end user. Um, and I'm particularly interested in really reducing the cost for somebody to like push out something that maybe has a total audience of like a hundred people, but they're like a hundred, you know, 
high school guidance counselors or people who run homes, homeschooling meetups or something like that, that like really want to have this kind of way of, you know, exchanging information between themselves and other people. Um, and I think it should be possible for people to build at least small businesses doing that kind of stuff, the way indie game developers are. So a lot of the goal with Rome Depot is to like con continue to lower the um, lower the barrier for people to just like Abhe, you know, they haven't really written a ton of code before, but they have a novel idea and they want to be able to push that kind of idea out and experiment with it. And, and this will hopefully allow more people to, to do that professionally. Long term, I actually think the main one of the main things we're working on is multiplayer room, um, like being able to actually you know, share content across graphs. And I, I do feel, I remember uh, I, we were in YC startup school and I remember meeting uh, um, one of the women in my batch um, wanted to build a, an app that uh, basically gave, you know, personalized recommendations on traditional Chinese medicine. So like you would put in your, you know, your symptoms and it would tell you like, here's a, a sort of regimen. And it was insane to me that at the time, um, and I still think it's mostly true today, like she would basically have to be able to afford to bring on professional software engineers to build something like that when it's really just, you know, a bunch of effort to, to structure some knowledge in, in terms of, you know, having domain expertise. But yeah, long term, I, I hope Rome Depot will also include um, not just extensions, but extensions that, that connect to structured content of some kind that you can pull into your graph. Like, um, and so that, you know, that also expands the, the scope of those things. So yeah, that, that's kind of, um, that's, that's kind of where I'm thinking about with, with, you know, with Rome Depot. Um, uh, and, um, yeah, that's, does that answer your question or do you have, you know, more on that? Um, cool. Any other questions, comments? Going once, going twice. Okay, we will be uh, we'll be doing a bunch more of these for all sorts of the extensions. There's there's only about seven, but uh, you know if if you're in the Slack or if you want to DM me or Josh if you're interested in putting out a, a you know. Um, packaging up some Rome JS into something for the Rome Depot, let us know. Um, we'll be trying to make the docs, you know, much more easily accessible. And there's a bunch of them that will be continuing. We'll have sort of a rolling release over the next uh, coming days and weeks. And um, I'll try and do more interviews and videos and, and feature a bunch of these things because there's some really exciting stuff that that is currently in Rome Depot and that's coming down the pipeline really soon. So um, thanks, guys, everybody, for showing up. Cheers. All right, take care. Oh.